I've been keeping bees since early 70s, uh, working for a beekeeper when I was in college, never really dreaming I'd do this myself for a living, but I did fall in love with the bees, and I still love the bees today. They provided a good living for my family, and I, my wife, and I started our business in 1978. And today, along with my son, operate about 2,000 colonies, and we pollinate crops, we try to make honey, and we migrate our bees throughout Central California. We've got over 300 different types of honey produced in this country, and each different type of flower produces a different type of nectar that would result in a different type of honey. And you can't get a dark honey from an orange blossom. That's gonna be a light, flowery honey. And uh, a buckwheat uh, plant is not gonna produce light honey. It'll produce a very dark honey. Honey is produced by honeybees from flowers, and flowers contain nectar and pollen. But the pollen is the protein source for the bees. It has nothing to do with making honey. Honeybees collect nectar, which is the sugar water solution at the base of a flower, separate and distinct from pollen. They collect that with their tongue. The field bee was out working a flower that had nectar at the base of the flower. That bee will use its tongue to suck up the nectar, and there's like a little honey pump in the bee's head that will, that will suck the, uh, the nectar up. The nectar is put into the bee's honey sack. It's like a storage tank. While the nectar is in the bee's honey sack, there are some enzymes that are added that help invert some of the sugars that may not already be in the simple fructose and glucose form, because honey is primarily fructose, glucose, water, other sugars in small amounts, and the other constituents that, that come from the nectar, the color and the flavor and everything else. The bees in the hive fan the wings to dehydrate that. You know, some nectars are very, very wet. They might be 95% water and only 5% sugars. So the, the hive bee will oftentimes use its tongue as a paintbrush, and they, instead of just depositing the nectar in the honeycomb, they will actually paint the nectar on the sides of the comb so that it's got maximum exposure to air and will dry quicker. It's very important that they try to get the, the nectar dried out into honey as soon as possible. What we do when the bees draw the frames out um, and seal it over, we evacuate the bees, we take the bees out of the boxes, put them on pallets and bring them into our warehouse. Keep them in a warm room where the honey can be warm enough where it'll flow. We want to have the honey warm so we can spin it out of the comb and have it flow through our piping system in our warehouse. And have a machine that takes 20 of these every minute and it will shave off the wax cappings off the cell, still leaving the majority of the honey and the majority of the wax on the frame. Once the caps are removed, the frames are conveyed onto a conveyor and we place them into a centrifuge. I have a couple of machines that hold 70 frames each. We place them vertically in a centrifuge and they're spun at about 350 revolutions per minute. The centrifugal force brings the honey out of the frame, up to the wall of the tank, and down to a sump tank. So once the honey is pumped into those tanks and stored for a couple days, we fill up our 55 gallon barrels and ship the honey to people like Brent. And then he takes care of it from there. Certainly bees are important to the to the um, production of many, many foods in our country. Uh, about one third of our diet would not be here were it not for the pollinating activities of bees. Almonds in California, for example, require about 1.6 million colonies of honeybees to pollinate the 800,000 acres of almonds in California. Uh, we also have a great deal of uh, apples and cherries and plums, blueberries, cranberries, melons of all types, and avocados. There's almost 100 different crops in the USA that could not be commercially produced without the pollinating activities of honeybees.